Hey, so I want to say sorry for not posting a video yesterday. I was at a place where uh, I was having internet problems. So uh, we're going to make this video today. And uh, I really hope that this was worth the wait. So we're going to make a procedural alien. And once we have the effect ready, you can literally use it in any kind of shape, right? So yeah, uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so we have a default blender here. I'm gonna press A, delete everything, and uh, let's just add a plane, which we're gonna use as a base for our geometry nodes, right? So we're gonna get into the geometry nodes. We're gonna click on new to add a new geometry node tree, disconnect the input from the output, and I'm gonna add an icosphere, which we are gonna create that effect on actually, right? Let's give it three subdivisions and let's keep it separate for now. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create the arms for those aliens and then uh, we are going to place those um, on the icosphere and then animate it, right? So uh, to start with, let's bring in a mesh line. Now you can even use a curve line as well, but uh, the reason I use this is because I have both the settings of height and uh, the count in, in the same node rather than having two separate nodes in in curve line you have to use a resample curve to add the counts right or, or the count of vertices so let's connect this mesh right onto our geometry output and i reduce the z-axis to 0 0.15 to make it a little bit shorter and the count we'll keep it at 30. now the next thing that we'll do is we're going to change it from a mesh to a curve because uh, if you have a curve line, you don't need this. Uh, let's change it from mesh to curve. And then we are going to add a curve to mesh right after that, just to make sure that it's turning back into curve. Right now, this is just so that we can add some thickness to it later on, right? Or add some geometry to it. Once we have this, we're going to go ahead and add a set position node. Now, this is to make sure that we are creating that wavy pattern uh, in our uh, arms. And we'll probably try and animate that wavy pattern over here as well, right? So in order to do that, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use a noise texture in here. And let's plug this in to the offset. Let's bring it back to its original position. For that, we can just simply add in a vector math node and subtract 0 0.5 from all the axes. Now, as soon as I do that, you see it's back onto its origin. I'm gonna reduce the scale of the noise texture uh, to 0.4-ish. Let's increase the detail to 18 and let's bring down the roughness to 0 0.1 or 1.5 would do as well. And we're gonna add some distortion of 0 0.5 in this as well. And uh, we got our effect pretty much ready. Now, if we change the noise texture from 3D to 4D, if we just animate the W value, you see it's automatically going ahead and animating that VV pattern. The effect's pretty subtle and I just want to exaggerate a little bit. So I'm gonna put zero on the Z axis because I don't want to animate it on Z axis. And let's add in some values here. So let's add about five. Now it's still uh, going way away from its original position and uh, I really don't want that right but uh, as you can see it's already giving us the animation that we are looking for once we have this the next thing that we could do is uh, we could just simply make like make sure that it's back to its original position the first thing and also that it's animating gradually from the base where it's it's not animating at all and at, at the top where the animation is really powerful so one way to achieve that is through a curve parameter node right so we'll add a curve parameter actually there's one more thing that we didn't do make sure the second node is set up to multiply and not uh, subtract uh, we're going to multiply the value not subtract it right so yeah now it looks a little bit more uh, like a vv pattern and the more you exaggerate it the more exaggeration or the more the higher the value they are more exaggerated the effect is right so you can just control it using here i'm going to duplicate the multiply node and let's multiply it with the curve parameter now if you see if i animate this the base or the origin point uh stays the same but it's animating more and more as uh, as in when it goes towards the top now there's one slight change that we can do in this is that just make sure that it's not animating on the z axis right we don't really want it to be going upwards only on the x and the y axis and the way we can control that is using a combined xyz node so if i plug this right in here and uh, make sure that it's only picking up values from x and y and not z now it looks a little bit more controlled and it's it looks better even though the effect is really slight but it's it's better than what we were seeing before right so now we have our arms ready the second thing that we can do is that uh if you if you remember i added a joint in here and there was a uh, was a sphere at the top as well so 
how do we go about adding that well before we even uh, add that let's add some geometry or some thickness to it right so that we can see the arm in the first place so i'm gonna add a curve circle and let's connect this curve circle on the profile curve node here and uh, let's control the way it looks right so let's bring down the resolution to 20 and i'm gonna add a set curve radius node in here so that i can control the way it looks uh, right now it's evenly thick and I really don't want that. So I'm going to use this same curve parameter nodes and plug it into the radius right now. It's somewhat giving me the effect, but it's kind of inverted. So let's add a color ramp node in here and let's control it with that. So I'm going to change this to B spline and flip the color ramp so that we have thinner part at the top and thicker part at the bottom. And let's bring this closer so that we are taking care of that. Bring down the brightness in here to right about. 0.3 let's go ahead and arrange this a little bit so that we can uh like it, it doesn't get too messy right so okay and let's uh group them into one group so i'm gonna do Control j after selecting everything and this is something that is my original arm now i'm gonna add the joints at the top at the uh, and the bottom of it right so for that uh, we're gonna need an instance on point node because we're gonna instance it onto this line so instance on point and let's join it back onto the original geometry using the join geometry node and let's bring the value right after the set position node into the point okay and then let's add an icosphere in here and we're going to use this as an instance object right so as soon as i do that can you see it's uh, it's applied that to everything and we don't want that before that before we even get into that let's also animate uh the arm so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to come back to my noise texture come to this w value and I'm going to do hashtag frame and divide it by 20 right so as soon as i do that now the arm is automatically animating with the icosphere it it kind of looks like an interesting effect but that's not what we are going for right now so let's control that somehow so what i really want is i want an icosphere at the bottom of the arm and at the top of the arm and the way we can do that is with this endpoint selection node right it gives you two options start size and the end size so i can just simply take it plug it into the selection now only now i only have an icosphere at the top and i have one at the bottom right but i want to give different textures to each of these arms so we'll need two instance on point node right so the what we'll do is we'll duplicate this instance on point bring this set curve position uh set, bring this value from the set position node once again into the points plug this back into the join geometry and we can either use the same icosphere or if you want you can use a separate one for the purpose of this tutorial i'm going to use the same one but if you want to have different sizes at the top and bottom you can just simply go ahead and use different icospheres so i'm gonna also duplicate the endpoint selection node for this first one i only want it to be showing at the start position so i'm gonna make the end size zero and for this other one the second one I'm, i just want it to be showing it at the end of it right so i'm gonna make the start size zero and let's also increase the subdivision of this to three just so that it looks nice and round and once we have all of this set up we're gonna take this entire geometry so take these arms as well and let's group them again Let's bring it down we're gonna take this output from this join geometry and instance them on our icosphere right so let's bring in the icosphere again now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another instance on point node and let's join it back to the original geometry so we're gonna add another join geometry node and uh, plug this back into the icosphere so that we see our original icosphere as well and then take this join geometry and use it in the instance now as soon as i do that there is way too many instances here so let's control that somehow right so for that we can just simply add a distribute on point node and let's bring down the value to two uh to start with let, let's say three right so we've got a few of them here and uh it's all pointing upwards right now so how do we make sure that it's pointing towards its normals right towards the way it's facing well it's simple you can just simply take this rotation output and plug this into the rotation you can see it's now facing right outwards right we have the effect pretty much to how we want one more thing i want to do is the spheres look really big so let's scale them down a little bit 
So let's bring them down to 0 0.4. And the next thing that we could do is we can also randomize the scale a little bit. So how can we do that? Well, to randomize anything, the best node here is called a random value node. I'm gonna take that, plug it into the scale. You can also just control the maximum and minimum scale of your arms. I'm gonna keep it as it is for now. Once we have this, uh, what we can do is we can also add a little bit more randomization to how it's looking. Cause if I animate this right now, or if it is getting animated in the same way, and this kind of looks more uh, static, we're gonna make it a little bit more dynamic. And uh, for that, right after this instance on point node, you can add a rotate instances node and duplicate this random value node change it to vector instead of a float and plug this value into the rotation okay and just make sure this maximum and minimum value is set to 0 0.2 because the more you take it the more weirdly it's going to be rotated and we don't want arms to be colliding with the original body right like this so let's keep it to 0 0.2 to give it a little bit randomness but not that much and for the minimum value i'm going to add tau at z axis and for the maximum value we're going to animate it so we're going to add hashtag frame and divide it by 10 and as soon as i do that now as you can see the arms are rotating uh, in itself as well and also giving that wavy pattern so it gives a little bit more organic look to it again you can make it low slower or faster just by dividing it with the larger number that's it for the animation the last thing that i'll do is i'll add a shade smooth node just to make sure that everything looks nice and smooth right so we're done with uh, our geometry node setup but wait we need to do the texturing and the composition as well because the effect that you saw in the original animation can't be achieved without those right so stay for that because uh, you're going to need it now one last thing that i want to show you in this is that the higher you make the scale the more arms will be added depending on the surface of your object you can also control the amount of points that you have in it you can also control how what's the distance between those points okay you can also basically control the amount of noise that you have in this uh, distortion or roughness and uh, how exaggerated you want the effect to look like right now it's time to add uh, start adding materials for that we're going to move to our shader editor and uh, let's switch to cycles as far as the rendering engine goes because i think cycle makes things look better and i like better so let's go with that we're gonna click on color management and change it to very high contrast and let's add an hdri so that we see what exactly is happening here once we have our hdri in let's click on the render properties again and click on film and just click on transparent now the last thing that we can do is we can add a plane bring it down scale it up and let's also go into the edit mode let's select this edge and extrude it onto the z-axis and select the edge again and click on Control b and bevel it a little bit we are also going to do right click shade smooth on the plane and just make sure that we add a new material let's call it plane and let's make it metallic bring up the specular bring down the roughness a bit and let's bring down the brightness so that we have a nice studio looking background here okay so that we can add a texture to our body right for that i'm gonna add a new like select our uh, alien here and let's click on new let's name it body and let's apply that texture over here right so we're gonna add a set material node plug it in here and let's select the body material to we'll bring down the brightness all the way down to zero and i'm gonna add a voronoi texture in here and let's plug this into the emission now also uh let's plug the distance value into the emission and also bring in a color ramp and plug this right after that bring up the value of the emission strength to 10 and uh, let's bring it closer we're gonna switch this from linear to Actually, we could even go B spline and let's flip this over. Okay, so we've got these nice looking patterns appearing here. So, what we could do is we could just change the color of this to somewhat orange ish, right? And press Control T and just make sure that it's sourcing from the object coordinates. Let's bring this down to 3 and let's uh, also animate this, change it from 4D, sorry, 3D to 4D and press hashtag frame. And divided by 50 and as you can see now it's 
animating it so you know to add another one just make it a little bit more darker so we're going to use the same effect again and uh, for these spheres at the edge of the arm but we're gonna tweak it a little bit right so let's say what we'll do is we'll bring down the scale of this to one and let's apply this material to the sphere so let's select the one that has endpoint as so endpoint selected as one because that's our sphere and just plug this right in here and uh, let's switch it to sphere now uh, let's go ahead and texture our joints and also the arms right so we'll first do the arms so let's add a new texture here and let's click on new let's name it arm and i'm going to delete the principal bsdf from this and add a class texture let's plug this in and let's bring up the roughness all the way up to one and the iro to 1.333 i'm going to add a set material node plug this right after the arm is created and let's select the arm material it's way too bright so let's bring down the brightness to 0 0.5 we probably use kind of the same texture for the joints as well but let's bring down the roughness a little bit right so let's duplicate this set material node once again let's plug this in here where the endpoint selection is on the start size and let's select the joints material we're going to add another plane here or you can add an area light if you're using ev let's bring it up let's give it a new material and let's name it light i'm gonna delete the principal bsdf and add an emission shader to it let's bring down the uh, sorry bring up the strength to 10 so that we have nice light coming into our scene add a cube and add a new material and this will be our volume right so we're going to delete the principal bstf and add a principal volume shader let's plug this into the volume of our material output bring down the density to 0 0.01 let's render one sample output so that we have something to work it work with in in composition and for that we need a camera so let's go in the front view and let's add the camera in here i just simply go here bring the location to zero z location to zero and yeah, this i can keep 18. i always like to render things into a square format i don't know why but uh, if you're like me just change the y-axis to 1920 adjust it a little bit so that uh, i don't have any black areas and i think this looks good enough also just make sure that in your render settings your render value is set down to 30. you are not going to need that many samples so let's render out a sample output and then we can simply use that to create a composition okay so we have a render ready but it looks kind of a kind of plain so let's add some composition right so we're going to click on this composition tab click on use nodes and i'm going to add a viewer node so that we see how uh how a render look like and how it will look like after we are done right so i'm going to reduce the size of it a little bit so that we can see it better and the first thing that we'll add is a glare node and let's plug this in right here and what we can do is we can change it from streaks to fog glow and from uh medium to high let's make sure it's set up to nine and the minimum value is to 0 0.1 these emission is not really creating a lot of uh emission that we want right so how do we fix that well let's go to the body let's bring this back a little bit so that we see a little bit of emission you can also change it to ease if you like like play with it a little bit uh so that we have a little bit more light coming into it I'm also going to go to the spheres material, do the same thing. I think this looks a little bit better. I'm also going to bring down the brightness of the plane behind it. It's not taking away from the focus of our original object. Now let's get back to composition and we have this glare node added to it. The next thing that we'll add is actually a lens distortion node. And let's plug this in here. Just click on fit because uh, the distortion makes it distort a lot. So as to avoid any kind of weird effect we're going to click on fit and we're going to add a dispersion of 0 0.1 now as soon as i do that can you see these edges just goes ahead and this uh, add some dispersion to it which gives it a little bit more sci-fi look and that's about it for the composition so once we render it now all right there we go can you see this is how it looks like now uh, and uh, 
this is all the magic that comes from a little bit of compositing so yeah i guess that's about it that's it for the video hope you guys liked it and like i said right once you have created this effect you can just basically use it in any kind of surfaces so even if i change this from uh, from an icosphere to the original mesh that was the plane it's still adding it right you can basically go to the edit mode scale it up add a few more of it and now it looks like some alien plant just play with it i really hope you enjoyed this if you did don't forget to like share subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video